I was talking to Poseidon last night. He says hello. The gist of the conversation, our house is a mess. The living room's a disaster from dynamite fishing and deep sea trawling. And my coral kitchen garden's bleaching and dying from climate change, pollution, and disease. Corals are not only majestically beautiful, they're incredibly functional. They provide habitat for more than 25% of marine species and protect shores from erosion. It turns out you humans share similar innate immunity genes, according to scientist David Miller. You're deeply connected. If they're in trouble, you're in trouble. It's time for artistic, synergistic life support, living sea sculptures using biorock mineral accretion technology. By running low volt direct current through seawater, the limestone minerals abundant in the ocean deposit onto metal. And the resulting surface is a natural substrate for corals to settle on and colonize. It becomes a non-invasive mineral rock. The electricity locally raises the pH, creating an alkaline buffer zone. And this is important because with ocean acidification and other factors, corals have a hard time getting the calcium carbonate they need to build their exoskeletons. So essentially, we're giving them skeletons so they can use their energy for other vital factors, other vital activities like reproduction. They can grow faster, they can survive higher temperatures that normally kill them. The electrolysis appears to increase their tolerance to some environmental stress. Biorock was invented by architect Professor Wolf Hilberts in the 70s as a building material. He teamed up with Dr. Tom Garreau of the Global Coral Reef Alliance to develop coral restoration, sustainable fishing, and permeable breakwaters. When I saw this progression, it struck me as a sculptural metal miracle. Many of these corals survived an El Nino year while the neighboring corals on the natural reefs died or bleached from temperature rise. And I just knew I had to do this. At the time, I was electroforming plants with metal. This is a copper cauliflower. And the electroforming and mineral accretion process are very similar, so it was an organic evolution for me. Now, I want you to imagine coral polyps and vertebrate animals calcifying onto these aquatic topiaries. And for you do-it-yourselfers, here are the basic steps. Design a sculpture, weld it. Immerse, electrify, source homeless fragments, attach with wires and pliers, and watch it grow. <laughs> I love them. This is a sculpture in Bali that's been growing for three months. It's a little zigzaggy, I understand, but we had a day to make it, and I just want to show you a progression. This is after two, and a, this after two years, this is three and a half years. And after six years, Liku Liku's overgrown. The sculptures can be any shape or size, from this very small coral skirt to reefs miles long. Maybe some tango dancers. And if we can build a super highway, we can build a super reef. We already have artificial reefs thriving with 20 to 50 percent more biomass than most natural reefs. I'm talking about decommissioned oil wells. Rather than scrap them as most regulations require, we could apply wave or tidal energy to prevent corrosion and to provide an alkaline boost to counterbalance the ocean acidification caused by carbon absorption. It's a great karmic twist. My current sculpture is inspired by DNA. I can't wait to paint it with coral. But first, we need to install it into the underwater museum in the National Marine Park of Cancun to distract and lure the tourists away from the over-snorkel natural reefs, and so it can become a coral refuge and a biodiversity study. Science and policy are key when it comes to coral health. I invite you to add the arts into the equation. With creativity, calcium and courage, we can turn the sunken ship around. <laughs> we can turn the sunken ship into a biorock boat, a living sea sculpture, accreting new life. Thank you.